then I'll go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for joining everybody. Uh, my name is Jennifer. Um, I am a psychiatrist uh, at Yale. Um, I'm currently on the, the consultation liaison psychiatry team. I have interest in um, perinatal psychiatry. Um, I also do some consultations with the, the OBs here, um, seeing with maternal fetal medicine. Um, and today I'll be talking about uh, psychological stress uh, during pregnancy, kind of the impact have on the pregnancy um, and uh, the children. Uh, I would, I'm not sure if I can uh, these waiting room notifications or maybe not. Okay, sorry. I'll just let that. me, yeah, let me change that. I'll keep going in the meantime. Okay. Um, so the word stress is very broad. Um, you know, it can mean many different things. It could mean something um, like everyday hassles, um, something or much more significant life events, family member, member loss of a job. Um, it can be acute, something happening, you know, like kind of all of a sudden, it can be very chronic stressors. Um, and so it really can kind of range. Um, it also includes things like, you know, having a diagnosis of things, something like major depressive disorder or anxiety disorder, um, or it can be something that's, you know, impacting a large number of people, like something like an external uh, disaster. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so a lot of times we can kind of differentiate, like, you know, there's everyday stress and there's really kind of um, the, the more severe stress is what I'm mostly going to be focusing on, um, really kind of the, the distress that people feel from these events and um, especially the way that people can perceive these different things can, can vary from person to person. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, so, like I said, the magnitude of stress is probably very important in terms of what sort of impact it has. Um, you know, there's some studies actually show that some mild and moderate stress may actually have a positive effect on the um, on the fetus. So, we're um, overall the very severe stress. The, and there's some conflicting evidence, but it seems like the more severe stress, it's much more likely to have a detrimental effect. Um, but mild and moderate may actually have some sort of positive effects. So, you know, there's various theories for this. It might be more stimulation for the fetus, some more adaptations, and improved chance of survival. It's not very clear. Um, but there might be also, depending on the prenatal environment, meaning like during pregnancy and the postnatal environment. Um, so when there are large differences in those prenatal versus postnatal environments, um, that, that can be detrimental. But again, a lot of this is really kind of uncertain um, in terms of, you know, exactly how much stress or distress somebody needs to have. Um, and it can vary from person to person and different people can have various reactions um, to a, a stressful environment. I also think it's important to note that like um, the outcomes that we're talking about, you know, the vast majority of children and fetuses who, uh, you know, have, um, whose mother, you know, undergo these stressful environments aren't going to have these outcomes. This is just, they're at an increased risk for possibly having these outcomes. So how can stress impact uh, the fetus and the child? I know exactly what is happening. What's the biological mechanisms behind it? Um, I'm just gonna kind of give the broad overview of these things, I'm not a biologist, but generally there's many different theories and we're not quite sure exactly how it impacts uh, the fetus. So it could be, um, one of the main theories is the increased activity of the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, um, which is really uh, key in releasing a lot of um, glucocorticoids and specifically cortisol um, in response to a stressor. And cortisol is something that's like, and it increases an important part, um, but too much can be negative. Um, and it seems like this access is, is kind of involved in the onset and timing of labor and delivery. Um, 
it, you know, it might have something to do with immune and inflammatory states, inflammatory cytokines. Um, it may be epigenetic changes, which is like reversible changes to DNA that are induced by the environments. Um, it could be microbiome composition, which is like the gut brain access, like how microbes in the gut can influence brain health. Um, or it could just be the indirect effects of the changes of maternal behavior when somebody's um, going through a stressful life events. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as well. So, that. So for uh, stress and maternal behavior, um, there are some studies looking at this, like how, how does it impact what a, a mother does when she's going under having a lot of um, uh, stress exposures. Um, and unsurprisingly, uh, studies have shown that more severe lifetime stressors can lead to more negative prenatal health behaviors and less positive prenatal health behaviors. So negative meaning like um, less likely to engage in prenatal care, more likely to engage in um, things like smoking, drinking, other risky behaviors. Um, you know, positive prenatal health behaviors would be things like engaging in care, taking a prenatal vitamin, exercise, et cetera. Um, this study was, you know, they thought it was more strongly associated, like the change in behaviors was more strongly associated with um, people who had a history of stress during the adolescence and adulthood, but it was significant throughout all, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that, you know, a history of um, stressful events in childhood versus adulthood or, or adolescence. And in particular, it seemed um, to have a big impact when the stress was related to um, housing or having issues with the, the marital partner. So that was kind of a couple of things that really called out that can seem to have a very big impact. Um, and they addressed it for many different um, sociodemographic characteristics um, and these things still held. So what are some examples of this? Um, they found that like, stress you know, that's very pregnancy specific, that um, has to do with the pregnancy is more likely to be linked with uh, smoking and poor diet. Um, people who have a history of adversity in childhood are more likely to smoke and use alcohol. Um, chronic stressors, things like poverty, domestic violence, was associated with um, smoking, again, um, was a common thing that came up, um, the use of substances and having a poor diet. Uh, but they also noted that it seemed to be off, um, it can be how women perceive stress in their lives um, that can affect the, the way that um, they then act and have, and how the effect is on their health behaviors. So does the timing matter during pregnancy when these stressful life events are happening? Um, and the answer is kind of maybe, um, probably, but we're not quite sure exactly. Um, there might be certain periods of like heightened vulnerability during pregnancy, um, but the research is a little bit inconsistent exactly what um, time period that is. Is it first trimester, second, third? Um, one of the largest like, population studies was looking at all births in Sweden um, from 1973 to 2004. Um, and they really found that it was seemed particularly um, associated with second trimester, so fifth and sixth month, um, with uh, adverse birth outcomes, particularly um, there was preterm birth and low birth weight that they found associations with. Um, and they also noted that during this time, um, this, it, the HPA axis, like I talked about before, of uh, the fetus becomes more functional. So does that have some sort of role? And maybe this being a more of a lower period, maybe. Um, but I would note that other research has suggested first trimester exposure um, or even before conception um, 
can have more of an impact. So in first trimester, there's more of an increased risk of congenital malformations. Um, and overall, it, it might be just that the question of timing might depend on the outcome that you're looking at. Are you looking at preterm birth? Are you looking at um, congenital malformations? Um, it, it, you know, and so the data is not quite clear yet. Um, and it might just depend exactly what you're looking at. Uh, it's it's pretty challenging to study this. Um, and a lot of studies have a lot of limitations. Um, <clears throat> so you know, there's a I can remember like animal studies out there, but the animal studies can't take into account more the the cognitive appraisal between the stressor and the response. So how somebody perceives things, how they're thinking about things, that's something a very human response that's would be difficult to measure in an animal. Um, it's also difficult to differentiate uh, state versus trait anxiety. Um, state being kind of like how you're feeling at the moment um, due to a current stressor. Trait being more like long-standing personality ca characteristics that persist. Um, so, um, you know, these traits might actually be passed on genetically or through parenting styles. And so how do we know what's, you know, what's happening, um, what the impact is from stress during pregnancy versus more genetically heritable traits um, from the mother um, can be challenging to determine. Um, life events during pregnancy can't be randomly assigned. Um, so it's not like you can have a group of people who don't have any stress in their life and then a group of people have a, a particular stressor and everybody's the same and it's randomized. And so, um, you know, you can't <laughs> have a study like that. And again, the, even if you're looking at particular events or are they influenced by somebody's heritable personality traits, that somebody more likely to be experience a certain events when they have these underlying traits, maybe. Um, so it's, again, it's a little bit hard to differentiate. Um, a statistical power can be an issue. So do you have enough women in the study to really be able to tell if there is an effect um, can be challenging. And sometimes it, a woman can be too far removed from the events to assess the, the woman's reaction. So if they're remembering back, you know, a year or two ago, like how did you feel in that moment can be really difficult to get like an accurate response to that. Um, another issue is generalizability. Um, so uh, groups that who are underrepresented in research um, might be at greater risk for prenatal stress, but they're really um, you know, underrepresented, like I said, underrepresented in research. Um, so this lack of diversity in research can really increase the risk for disease and the decreased likelihood of responding to treatment. Um, and when I was looking through the literature as part of this, uh, presentation, I really found very, very little literature on, um, on, on minority groups. Um, I found one looking at adverse pregnancy outcomes um, in Australian Indigenous women, um, looking between, between stress during the pregnancy and rates of the adverse outcomes. Um, and unfortunately, this study was underpowered and so couldn't show an effect between maternal stress and the pregnancy outcomes. Um, but they did find very, very high rates of depression and anxiety and symptoms of PTSD, 20% um, for depression and anxiety, 30% for PTSD. Um, for depression and anxiety uh, in other populations, it's more around 10%. Um, and they really called out that there's really limited studies that are looking at like effective and culturally appropriate interventions for indigenous indig women. Um, disaster research, um, <clears throat> so this is one um, area that people look at to address some of the limitations of other studies. It, you know, disasters, they're an independent stressor that affects a large number of pregnant women in relatively random fashion. So there was um, an example of that is something called Project, Project Ice Storm. Um, it was a series of freezing rain storms in Quebec in 1998. Um, lots of loss of power, emergency shelters. Um, some people were without power 
for like months. Um, you know, the city kind of shut down, people lost their jobs, buildings collapsed, people were injured. Um, so it was very significant. Um, and so they followed women who were pregnant during this period of time. Um, and they um, found that the severity of the exposure did have significant effects on the cognitive and language development of two-year-olds. So specifically um, lower uh, Bailey MDI scores, the, the mental development index um, that, that monitors neurodevelopmental outcomes in children, um, and also noted a reduction in both productive and receptive vocabulary. So other outcomes that um, various studies have looked at, and again, it, it's really more studies are needed to draw conclusions. Um, these are studies that have shown some associations and in general, this is what we have seen. Um, but again, um, there there is kind of like some limitations in this. And so really more research is needed. Um, so some studies do show an association with preterm birth. Um, for women, and I'll talk a little bit more about this, women who have <clears throat> um, significant anxiety um, that can lead to the, um, some association with the infant and having more um, negative emotional reactivity or um, what's perceived as difficult infant temperaments. Um, a woman with uh, significant depression has been associated with infants with higher um, activity or impulsivity. Um, or I, I think it was toddlers, um, neurodevelopmentally um, associated with poor mental skills and delayed motor developments and poor cognitive performance. Um, but again, <clears throat> really need um, more studies to, you know, parse out exactly, um, you know, the types of stressors, the timing, etc. cetera. Uh, for perinatal depression, um, Several studies have shown a link between uh, depression and anxiety and child emotional behavioral problems. Um, one study was an IVF study that looked at maternal stress in pregnancy um, and um, it, child symptoms have conduct disorder. And the IVF study was interesting because it did show an association with mothers um, who had genetically unrelated um, children through IVF, um, and they still found an association between that stress in the, the um, perinatal period and uh, conduct disorder in the child. Uh, depression during pregnancy associated with higher rates of complications um, during the pregnancy, so preeclampsia, preterm birth, low birth weight, um, or like to have an operative delivery. Um, and then postpartum depression can be associated with poor um, mother to infant bonding, um, emotional and cognitive um, dysregulation in the child. Um, anxiety what has been found to be associated with um, increased odds of preterm birth, uh, lower mean birth weight, increased odds of being small for gestational age and a small head, head circumference. Um, so what, what to do, um, uh, it's, you know, best to start interventions as soon as possible, although, um, as we've talked about, you know, it, adverse events, uh, you know, can be caused in the second and third trimester, so it's never too late um, to, to start to help um, the women who are, are undergoing stressful life events. Um, there aren't really any studies that have shown like interventions for maternal depression, anxiety, or stress um, with long-term follow-up for the outcomes in the child. Um, there is one study, um, the Nurses Family Partnership, um, that looked at teenage single mothers um, that involved uh, nurse visits for um, help with like diet, healthcare, education, reduction of smoking, et cetera. So not specifically for stress, but overall add in much more support. Um, and this was associated with a reduction in criminal criminal behavior in the in the girls and the in the children that were, were female. Um, 
but again, very limited studies in terms of like um, interventions, you know, for the mother that will link to outcomes for the child. Um, one of the key things, though, would be appropriate screening and detection of, you know, depressive and anxiety disorders, um, as well as abuse, um, and appropriate referral to behavioral health treatments. So here are some resources um, that I think are very helpful. Um, if you are someone that you know who um, you know, might need help in the perinatal period. Um, Postpartum Support International is an organization that um, they have many different online support groups um, for different scenarios. Also try to help people find providers, um, have it directly and and can link you with like local people to try to figure that out. Uh, Mother to baby is a great resource and just in terms of like um, medication use during pregnancy, which I, I didn't have time to go into in terms of like if somebody was using medication to help address things like depression or anxiety, um, they really have a lot of resources to discuss that. Um, the MGH Center for Women's Mental Health, um, again, very, very big resource for reproductive psychiatry, um, links to many different like support groups, uh, providers, just informational um, documents of, about um, pregnancy and stress, um, depression, anxiety. Um, Mind Body Pregnancy is a, a doctor who specializes in this area and again has a lot of informational um, articles on a website uh, to provide guidance in terms of like mental health and well-being during the perinatal period. Um, and then NICPAP for Moms um, is a organization in Massachusetts that, um, again, their website just has many resources that people everywhere could use um, for a pregnant postpartum woman, links to like um, support groups and um, providers, etc. So I think I'm at about time. Um, I'm going to stop sharing. Sorry, I realize I have some questions here. Um, yes. Okay. Um, are you able to see the questions in Whova, or do you want me to ask them for you? Or I think I can pull them up. One second. Okay. And then, if anyone has additional questions, you can either put them in the um, in the Whova uh, platform, or you can raise your hand if you'd like to ask it directly. We'll have about five minutes for questions. Okay. Um, I see the first one is that how can I better support friends, family, and peers experiencing a lot of stress during pregnancy? What social supports and resources are there? Um, yeah, great question. I think, I mean, even just acknowledging <laughs> what's going on and letting them know that you're available is very helpful. Um, and I'll, I'll put the resources um, that I had here um, up again. So you guys can take a look at it. Um, I think these have a, just a lot of information in terms of like um, how to get additional support and um, links to providers and, and more information. Um, and so I think that's a good resource to have. Uh, another um, one. You can. Sorry, in the chat. Sorry, you can also put them in the chat because um, the, the chat will be visible after the session has ended as well. So um, okay, if the people chat, would like. Yeah, the chat in Whova or? In Whova, yeah, yeah, it should be right next to the Q&A, Q&A polls chat. Oh, I see, okay, yeah, I can um, uh, definitely add those in here too. So you can do that later, yeah. Um, let me see. And then another question was, how can institutions in particular academia better support its pregnant colleagues and students and be forward thinking and creating a lower stress environment for them? Um, that's another great question. <laughs> and I, um, again, I, I think it's very challenging institutions. And I think a lot of us work in the medical field as well. I mean, I think that's a particularly stressful environment. Um, I think one thing advocating um, for uh, parental leave is is very big and can is something that's done on like an institutional level in terms of those policies. Um, that can also be challenging. Um, but I think just 
part of it is bringing attention to the issue and and talking about it and acknowledging it um, and also reaching out to your coworkers who you know might, might be in this position. Um, so there's kind of like the one-on-one -on -one, uh, way to go about it, but then also at the institutional level in terms of like addressing policy is like parental leave um, is, is gonna be important. Um, are there other questions that I can't see or missed or anybody just wants to ask over Zoom? It was a great talk though. Um, I definitely appreciate you acknowledging that the um, the animal model doesn't directly relate to, I'm, I'm in research too, so you always have to be reminded that the animal model doesn't directly correlate to the human experience. So um, I appreciate that. Um, as we are concluding this um, session, uh, I highly encourage you to interact with Jennifer on Whova. Uh, it makes it a bit easy to a bit easier to reach out and and discuss individually. Uh, so feel free to reach out to her and and continue the conversation. And yeah, and so Jennifer will update the chat with the resources available so you all can access those as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining.